Systems of linear equations and two variables. Our objectives today are going to be to discuss the possible solutions to systems of linear equations that involve two variables and to solve a system of linear equations in two variables. A set of two linear equations with the same two variables is called a system of linear equations. Any ordered pair that satisfies both equations is the solution to the system. So if we had any set of linear equations. Also remember that the solution to the linear equation is a point on the line. So if it's a solution to both of those equations, it must be a point on both of those lines. If there's no solution to that system of equations, then there is no point that exists that's on both of those lines. And we'll see that in one of our examples as well here. So if we take a look at this, we'll take a look at these three possibilities first. We have two lines that intersect, and they intersect right here at this location. Therefore, this is one linear equation, this is another linear equation. The solution to the system of linear equations for x comma y is whatever this coordinate is here, and there's exactly one solution. We call this consistent. Next, there are possibilities where the linear equations are identical to one another. So for example, something that is a multiple of another, like x plus y equals 7, and 2x plus y, 2y equals 14. The second equation is double the first, really. So it seems like they're two different equations or two different lines, but they actually happen to be the same lines, and they coincide. And we would say that there are infinitely many solutions, because take a look. Where do these lines intersect? Well, they intersect here, 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 all the way up, and they keep intersecting forever and ever, because all of these points they share in common are points on the line already. Finally, the third possible scenario would be two lines that happen to have like the same slope but different y-intercepts. You can see that these two lines are parallel. We say that this is de dependent and there is no solution. In our first example we'll see that we're going to solve the following systems of linear equations algebraically. Now, there are two methods to solve systems of equations that we're going to look at. One is called substitution and one is called elimination. This is an example where substitution is very useful simply because we already have the expression for one of the variables in terms of the other. So this is the generic expression for y. So I could take that and plug it in right here for y. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the first expression, 2x plus 4, and I'm plugging it in for y. So I'm going to simply put this here for a second. Well, this goes here. This 3x goes here, and this equals negative 11. So again, I've taken this solution and plugged it in right there for the quantity y, because that's what 2x plus 4 is. 2x plus 4 is really y. And now we can simply go through and solve. We'll have 3x minus 4 minus 8 equals negative 11. If we solve for this, we'll end up getting x equals 3. Now, if x is equal to 3, it might seem like we're done for a moment, but we have to remember that this is a system of equations, so our solution will be some coordinate x comma y. This would be our answer here. Well, we've got the 3 already for the x, but we need the y value. Now, take a look at the top. You've got two equations. So you could go ahead and plug this 3 for x in here or in here. Now, either one you'll get the same answer for y, but it makes more sense to plug it in up here because it's already solved for y. So plug this 3 in right here. You have 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 4 is 10. So the y coordinate is 10. Now, we should check this by plugging in those coordinates into both equations to make sure that they both hold true. But another way to check this is to look for the intersection on your graphing calculator. So we could take a look at what the graph looks like for this. And indeed, these two equations intersect at the point 3, comma 10. Example 2, solve the following system of equations algebraically. Now in this example, it makes more sense to use the other method of elimination. And let's talk about what elimination is. Elimination is the idea that we want to have opposite coefficients in front of one of our variables. So for example, this is 3, we'd want this to be negative 3. Or this is 4, we'd want this to be negative 4. Well, we can't just make this negative 4. It's difficult to do that. It would be very difficult to actually get a negative 4 there. We'd have to multiply by negative 4 fifths. But that makes no sense. So instead, let's multiply this whole equation by negative 3. Okay, so we're going to take, this is equation 1, this is equation 2. Let's multiply equation 2 by negative 3. That'll yield negative 3x minus 15y equals 21. And since this is still equation 2, it's just been altered, we'll call it 2a. 
What we can do then is notice that we have opposite coefficients right here and here. So let's look at equation 1 and look at equation 2a and just put them next to each other. Let's write it down below here. Let's see. Copy down equation 1. Well, take a look and notice. Now, what we can really do here is just add straight down. Let's use linear combinations. So we add straight down. Three, negative 3x and 3x is 0. Negative 15y and 4y is negative 11y. 21 and 1 is 22. And this, when solved for y, gives us negative 2. Now to solve for x, we can go ahead and plug in negative 2 for y here or here and get the x. But this x is by itself already, so let's do it in this location. Plugging in our negative 2, this equation becomes x minus 10 equals negative 7. And then adding over the 10, we're going to get x equals 3. And as a result, our final answer will be 3 comma negative 2. What we can do to check is go ahead and graph both of these linear equations and find the intersection, and it would be at 3 negative 2. Or we can take 3 negative 2 and plug that coordinate back into both equations and see that they both are indeed true. Example 3 says solve the following systems. On the left-hand side, we'll definitely use substitution because we already have solved for y. So let's take this whole expression here and plug it in for y right there, giving us x plus 2 parentheses negative 1 half x plus 4 equals 1. Then we take the 2 and distribute it. It becomes x, and this is going to be minus x plus 8 equals 1, which gives us 8 equals 1. Now that is not true. This is indeed a contradiction, so there is no solution. So what kind of lines do we have here? We have parallel lines. And if you take a look and you solve for y in the first equation, you end up seeing that you have the same slope of negative 1 half, but a different y-intercept. In part b, what we're going to see here is that we should use elimination. Let's multiply that first equation by 2. If we multiply the first equation by 2, we end up getting negative 6x plus 10y equals negative 12. That is equation 1a. If we take equation 1a and put equation 2 below it to see that the x is canceled, it looks great, right? But what are we going to notice now? Actually, everything cancels when we head straight down for this problem. Add straight down, what do we get? Well, we get 0 plus 0 equals 0, or 0 equals 0. Well, this is an example where there are infinitely many solutions, or all real numbers. So x and y can be all real numbers, so we have coinciding lines. We have coinciding lines. Okay, it's where two lines lie on top of one another. They intersect infinitely. Example 4. If 3x equals y plus 5 and 2y minus 2 equals 12k, solve for x in terms of k. All right, so in this problem, it seems like we're going to have three variables, and it says solve for x in terms of k. Let's begin to dissect that part first. If I said to you solve for x in terms of m, all that means is that instead of k being the answer, you would have m in the answer. So we're going to get an answer that says x equals, and there's going to be something with a k in it, okay? x in terms of k. So we want to solve for x. Again, that's the idea. So let's look at the first example here and solve for x. If we solve for x there, we get x equals the quantity y plus 5 all over 3. Again, just by dividing by 3 right there. So this is x in terms of y, but we want x in terms of k. So let's go ahead and solve for y in this part, and we can substitute it into the first one we just got there. So solving for y, this becomes 2y equals 12k plus 2. Well, actually, we can divide by 2 everywhere, so just make this easier on us. Okay, that's what y turns out to be. Okay, so we get y equals 6k plus 1. Let's take that quantity and plug it in right there for y. So it turns out that x is equal to 6k plus 1 plus 5 all over 3. Well, what that really is is 6k plus 6 over 3, which actually turns out to be 2k plus 2. So again, x in terms of k, x in terms of k is 2k plus 2. One thing to notice on your SAT kind of test, you're going to see that possibly the answer might look like this, where you factor out a GCF of 2. So again, multiple choice answers, you have to make sure that you manipulate your answer to look like the answer choice that is on the test. 
In example 5, it says to solve the following system algebraically. And now what you'll notice right away is that we have three equations and three unknowns. So let's write down our first goal. The goal in the beginning is to eliminate one of the variables twice. And here's what I mean. Take a look at equations 2 and 3, for example. If we just simply add equations 2 and 3 together, so let's write down our command. Let's add equations 2 and 3 together. Okay, let's do that. So that's going to look like the following. Negative x plus 2y minus 4z equals 5. And x plus 4y minus 6z equals negative 1. So we're adding these two equations together. Okay, that's a negative 1 at the end there, make sure. The x's drop off, notice. We get 6y minus 10z equals 4. Now, this is a new equation, and we've eliminated the variable x. So let's call this equation 4, since we stopped earlier at equation 3. Now, what we've done here is the following. We've gotten rid of equation or variable x altogether. So we've got now one equation, but still two variables. So we need to do this again to get another equation, and we'll have two equations and two variables. But since we already combined equations 2 and 3, we can now only combine equations 1 and 2, or somehow combine equations 1 and 3. It does not really matter, but personally it's easier to combine equations 1 and 2. If I just double this whole equation, double the whole thing, and add it, we'll see that the 2x, and this would be a negative 2x, those will cancel. So again, since we canceled x already once, we need to cancel x again to get a second new equation. So we're going to take equation 1 and add double equation 2 to that. So let's write that down. We're taking equation 1 and adding double equation 2 to that quantity. And here's what this is going to look like. two x minus y plus two z equals negative seven that's equation one and to that we're going to add double equation two doubling equation two we get negative two x plus four y minus eight z and that equals ten now we're going to take those two and we're going to add straight down again noticing that the x's are going to drop off again this will yield three y this will yield negative 6z, and this will yield 3. And this is equation 5. Here's what you need to notice next. We now have a new equation and another new equation. So we've got two equations with two variables. We can solve these two equations by themselves now using elimination again. So if I can see clearly that if I double this, I'll get a 6, but I want this to be the opposite of this. So let's multiply this whole equation by negative 2. That'll put this as a negative 6, and that positive 6 will cancel these two out if we add them. So we'll add equation 4 to double equation 5, but we'll add it to negative 2 times equation 5, actually. Okay, so we'll multiply this by negative 2 and add that to equation 4. So let's write down our command. We're going to take equation 5 and multiply it by negative 2, and to that we're going to add equation 4. <coughs> And here's what we're going to end up getting as a result. Negative 6y plus 12z equals negative 6. That's equation 5 when it's multiplied by negative 2. And then let's to that add equation 4, which was 6y minus 10z equals 4. And when we add these two equations together now, what we're going to notice is that the y's cancel leaving behind 2z and leaving behind negative 2. Therefore, z is equal to negative 1. That only gives us one variable, though. We still need to get the value for y. So at this point, it really doesn't matter. We can plug back in anywhere. I'm going to plug back into equation 4. Here's equation 4 right here still. We haven't done anything to it. We can take that negative 1, plug it in there to get y. Okay, so again, I replaced the z with negative 1 to solve for y. This will give me a y value of negative 1. Now, the final step. We've got, x, we've got z and we've got y. We still need x. So at this point in time, we need to go back to one of our originals and plug back in where we have three variable situations. So I'll write down one of the originals at the bottom here. 
Okay, let's pick one of the originals. Well, the original that has x with no coefficient in front of it is equation 3. x is by itself, and it looks like the following. x plus 4y minus 6z equals negative 1. This is the third original equation that we started with in this problem. So let's go ahead and use this one because x is by itself. So all we need to do now is plug back in the y and the z value. So we get again plugging in negative 1 for y and negative 1 for z. That's just a coincidence obviously that they happen to be the same answer. <clears throat> if we solve for x we end up getting the next value of negative 3. So what would our final solution be written as a coordinate? This would be a three-dimensional coordinate. Negative 3, comma, negative 1, comma, negative 1. Again, x, comma, y, comma, z. So if you had a graph of this, just, just for your own curiosity, here's what it would look like. We want to graph three, negative 3, negative 1, negative 1. These are what our axes would look like. The z-axis is coming out of the page. So we would go negative 3 along the x, <clears throat> negative 1 in the y, and then back 1 in the z. So it would be a point here in space, but in the third dimension into the page. Again, 3 over, down 1 for the y, but z is negative 1, so we're going to go 1 into the page. So it's a point somewhere in here in three-dimensional space. Now, in order to check the solution, we could plug into all of the equations, but there's another way to check it and to actually come up with the answer faster than what we just did, and it's called using a matrix. So I'm going to quickly talk about how to use a matrix. The way a matrix works is you take the data or the three equations and you organize it in some form of a table. And here's what the table would look like. Just take all the coefficients you see. So I see the coefficients 2, negative 1, 2, negative 7, negative 1, 2, negative 4, 5. So we're really looking at all the numbers, okay? So let's write them here in an organized table. Now, once we have this table or this matrix, what we really want to do is reduce it in a way to make it simpler for us to see. And the way to do this is by performing row operations. Now, instead of going into the row operations by hand, in class we talked about how to use your calculator to do this. So if you can plug this matrix into your calculator on, say, a TI-83 calculator, you can then use a function called RREF, which stands for Row Reduced Echelon Form. And if you do the Row Reduced Echelon Form of this matrix, say you put this matrix into matrix A on your calculator, what you're going to get as a result is the following. You're going to get a matrix output of 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1. And I hope you recognize those values right there. What you should recognize is the fact that our answer happened to be negative 3, negative 1, negative 1. So let's go ahead and discuss what this means, actually. What happened is the calculator performed row operations, and it put 1s along what are called the pivots. Okay, this is called row reduced echelon form. Echelon, these are the pivots along here. This is row reduced echelon form. And what it really means is the following. If you remember from our original, these were all the x coefficients. These were the y's, these were the z's, and these were whatever the number was at the end of the equation. So this first row here really states the following. 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals negative 3, which to me is just x equals negative 3 because the y's and the z's don't matter. There's none of them. And the second one, similarly, is 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals negative 1, or simply y equals negative 1. And then finally, for the third one, the same idea occurs. 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals negative 1, or z equals negative 1. Again, these come from the fact that these have no significance. So what the calculator has done is, is put 1's in the pivots, which in essence give us the solutions. This is x, this is y, and this is z, in that order. x, y, z, whatever the order of the columns were. One thing to note on your calculator is that this happens to be a 3x4 matrix. 
there are three rows, one, two, three, and four columns in the matrix. So when you were typing this in a minute ago, I should have mentioned <clears throat> that a matrix entry is in rows by columns. So when it asks for rows by columns, you should type in three by four so you could enter this into your matrix. Your homework from this section is from 3.5 and the mix review on page 130.